speaking with composer Kevin Ripple, who composed the score to hit games such as the original Gears of War, uh, Resistance, Burning Skies, and now he's behind the music for the highly anticipated Aliens, uh, Colonial Marines. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with today, Kevin. Hey, no problem, man. Glad to have him. I mean, thanks for having me. <laughs> Uh, so I guess to start, how did you become uh, interested in music, and what led you to film, TV, and game composing? Uh, I was interested in music from very early on. I mean, the earliest I can remember uh, being interested is in the fourth grade. Um, shortly before that, the first musical thing that affected me, which made me notice music, was uh, seeing Star Wars. Mm. So that score, you know, had a big impact on me. And shortly after that, I started playing the trumpet in fourth grade. And from there, you know, starting with the trumpet, I learned music theory. And I continued to play the trumpet all the way through high school. And during that time, I picked up the, the I learned to play the piano and the guitar. Mm-hmm. So um, that was, and I, you know, I, I played, uh, classical stuff, I, I studied jazz stuff, a big band, um, and a myriad of other styles of music, so, I mean, that was my first venture into music, I mean, I, there was no other reason than to, you know, be able to play the stuff that I loved hearing. Right, right. So, um, so I mean, you compose music for pretty much all sorts of media, um, you know, video games, TV, and film. Uh, does your process change depending on what kind of media you score, such as like how would you approach a film versus a video game? Um, it, 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 there's a necessity for it to be different, um, mainly because a film, you approach it in a way to support the story. And the story is pretty much laid out in front of you from the start, and it's a roadmap from beginning to end. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a linear story. Um, so you approach it in a way that you can contour the music exactly to the story and support the story. With video games, it's a little bit different, um, and usually there is a lot of music, a lot more music needed in games than it is for film music. Um, so you sort of have to approach it um, in a similar way with supporting the story, um, but some of the times uh, there's so much going on and different methods to portray the story in a game because every game player is going to do you know something different so you have to have the music support many different varieties of gameplay within a story so there is different approaches right right and uh so even working i mean even composing games for a a while now uh how has composing for video games changed over the different uh generations of uh consoles and you know technology is consistently getting better and and space more space on the disc and everything are you able to do more on games for you know ps3 and xbox 360 than you were on the the last generation of systems yeah uh early on when i was when i started working on games about uh 10 to 12 years ago um i was just delivering you know just regular audio files Mm -hmm. um so i actually came at a time into the industry when, you know, regular Red Book audio was being able to be used in games um, instead of using uh, just strict MIDI samples. I mean, MIDI, general MIDI, and triggering it and having it sound like the the, uh, the obligatory beep, boop, beeps, you know, <laughs> that everybody references when they reference game music. Um, so even back then, I still think it was, you know, pretty advanced for the time of having, you know, uh, regular audio wave files being... Uh, implemented into games, but since then, um, the audio engines have gotten so versatile and so advanced that you're able to create more dynamic music within a gaming experience. So you're able to deliver smaller. How do I explain this? Um, like there's a you can deliver a full piece of music, but within a few uh, full piece of music you obviously have, when writing a piece of music, you write, and there's multiple layers that make up this one piece of music. Right, right. They're able to deliver these layers individually, and they can be constructed in a way that sort of goes along with what the gamer is doing. Mm-hmm. So it's, the goal is to dynamically score the gameplay as if it's happening. So with the technology these days, it's quite a bit different than it used to be, 
where you just drop in a song and it plays under a level. Right, right. Now there's the ability to uh, have many different elements uh, of the music be triggered individually or with each other to uh, make the experience that much more uh, contoured to each player. Mm-hmm. So and now for Aliens, uh, Colonial Marines, what was your goal uh, musically for this game? To uh, At first it was to create you know, an, uh, an awesome score that would... Well, it was not decided right when I got onto the project of whether to make this score fully original uh-huh. and just a new addition to the Aliens universe or something that would reflect an existing... Uh, musical identity that existed already. Um, so once, you know, going back and forth with Gearbox uh, a few times, it was decided that since the story is canonical to the first two films, we especially it takes place right after Aliens, that we thought it would be best in, in order to help uh, the story and help uh, gamers get back into it is to reference musical... Uh, uh, reference melodies and motifs from the first two films, whether it be Goldsmith or Horners. So my initial, after that was decided, my goal was to create this very familiar sound, but with my twist on it. Right. So I we we ended up borrowing and and paying homage to a lot of the Horner references and a lot of the Goldsmith stuff. And the reason for that was because in the game, many environments, I don't say many, but some of the environments from both films are revisited in the story. So I, we thought it was essential to convey that vibe and feeling that was in the first two films. So that was the main goal of the score. And then the second was just to, you know, live up to what those scores had already uh, put forth before, you know, this game came along. I mean, right. I, I had a, you know, big shoes to fill and coming, you know, <laughs> following in the footsteps of, of Horner and Goldsmith and being that I grew up listening to those two score and I'm a fan of those two composers, it was at first it was pretty daunting. But so my, my goal was to create this score but at the same time uh give the familiar sound that fans are looking for and also respect the franchise at what it is and don't go too far out in left field and create a score that I, myself, as a fan of the franchise, would want to hear another composer do. Right, absolutely. And uh, and since this, I mean, the, the game is, you know, more, I think, more in line with James Cameron's kind of style of Aliens, a little bit of more action than, uh, um, yes. but, but there's also a horror aspect to the franchise, too. How did you manage to balance that in your music? Did you want to lean more to one side of, you know, action versus horror, or did you try to find yourself kind of in the middle I think there's a pretty even uh, division of both of the uh, dynamics in the score. There's definitely a lot of action in the game, um, but then there are the subtler moments where you're walking through corridors and you don't know what the heck's going on, you know, what's going to jump. Um, but uh, both of them I approached, like with the, the, the tension stuff, I approached similarly to how Horner approached his tension stuff with synths and very hollow-sounding uh, organic elements. Um, but right, first, when I first started writing, it was a lot of ambient stuff, a lot of tension stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as the, the game was getting more and more developed, we were realizing that there's a lot more action in the game. Uh, so then, you know, in the end, there was an even amount of both uh, tension, horror, and action. And, uh, and, and actually, mentioning how earlier you talked about how the game scores are kind of built on layers and and introducing elements as a as the game progresses you know a player dictates kind of the pacing of the game so how how challenging was it to to really build suspense and that kind of sense of dread in a video game where you don't know you know when the player is going to enter a certain area to trigger that music and to trigger the layers like did you try to play through it yourself and kind of get kind of a general feel of the pacing of the game well, possible? what I did was I requested, because uh, at the time I was writing, I, there was uh, no way to have me actually play the build at that moment. Mm-hmm. What I did was I asked the develop, developer Gearbox for gameplay videos so I could witness it as someone playing the game and get a vibe of the pacing and everything. But to convey and build the tension as if the player 
you know, as you like you were saying, the player sets the pacing and everything. Um, we ended up doing a, we took a, about an hour of recording time and recorded a lot. I mean, I like tons and tons of tension cues and atonal cues and stuff that could be modular and used to be triggered when, uh, as a player is going through and it could be built on top of and it can create the dynamic impact that's needed as the, as the gamer is walking through. And then once it hits a certain point, then certain key cues, uh, click in in their, you know, full orchestral, uh, stature. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so apart from, uh, aliens, it was also, it's also been announced that you're going to be doing the score for a uh, cabin fever, uh, patient zero starring Sean Astin and part of that, you know, very popular, horror franchise i know you can't say much about it but uh what should we expect musically from that um i'm not a hundred percent sure yet i haven't even spotted the film yet oh wow um i start work on it uh i believe when is it, first week of, about two weeks i start work on it so i'll be spotting it very soon um but it's gonna have i believe it's gonna have um a lot of dominican influence in the score um, or at least hints of it, because that, that's the uh, environment the score, uh, the movie takes place in. So we want to sort of have the region, you know, come across mm-hmm. in, the, in the elements of the score. Um, I don't know how much generic or typical horror esque music is going to be in the film. I'd like not to go the traditional route. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'll say I have yet to see any footage of it yet. So I mean that might spark a bunch of new ideas. But I'm actually pretty excited to start work on that. So I mean, as a composer, and you, you know, you haven't even looked at it yet. Uh, have you? Are you even? Does your mind? How does your mind work? Is it just like? Are you walking down and you're? I mean, you know it's coming up. Are you working ideas out? Do they just kind of pop in? Have you even? Have you read the script or know anything about the structure of it at all? I read the script, I know the story, I know everything about the story, and when I was reading the script, I, you know, with, you know, it just triggers creative ideas mm-hmm. as I'm reading. Now, whether those ideas coincide with what the visuals look like, I have no idea yet. So ideas start definitely start flowing and how I'm going to uh, sort of create a sound palette for the, for the film, which I've already started putting together. Um, ideas, and not so much musical elements, but sort of certain sounds that I can contour to the story. Right, right. But as for any musical ideas, strictly, you know, musical structured ideas, I haven't really done yet, because I don't want to, you know, get, not get stuck, but get hooked on and really end up liking an idea I had, and then I go to watch the film, and I'm like, oh, this is not going to fit at all. You know? <laughs> I definitely like to see footage of something, um, uh, to start creating any musical elements for our films. Well, I'm I'm really excited to see what what turns out because I think it's always great for composers to be brought on really early in the process. I think that it always turns out to be a better experience for I think the audience than right. That. Yeah, because the composer has time to live with the sc- uh, live with the story and stuff and really digest it. Right. Well, uh, I guess to wrap up, I always uh, I love to ask composers this question. Uh, if you had the opportunity to score any film ever made, with no disrespect to the original composer, which film would you choose? Oh, so like existing films? Yes. Uh-huh. Wow, there's a lot of films out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you had one playground to, to, to try to go in and, and take a shot at, what would you, what, what comes uh, first to mind? Wow, I really love, uh, what's his name? I, I really love his imagery and his storytelling, but I can't think of his name. Um, uh, is it Calvin Singh? Singh? Uh, the director of The Cell? Oh, um, Tar, uh, Tarsem Singh. Tarsem, that's it. Oh my God, yeah, Tarsem Singh. Yeah. Um, I would love to score The Cell. That's a That's a very... That's a very visually, yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, I love his visuals. I mean, even in uh, his latter films, are, which I can't recall the name of, I mean, his just imagery is just so profound and uh, really surreal. Mm-hmm. So, but since I lean towards the darker stuff, uh, the <laughs> cell was really awesome. And, I mean, Howard Shore's score is just really great for that film. But 
I mean, it's not an epic film. It's not, you know, a blockbuster film, but that's that type of film I would love to score. So that's one film that sticks out of my head. That's a, that's a great answer. I love it. <laughs> Uh, Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. It was a great pleasure uh, to chat with you, and uh, I cannot wait to uh, have your music scoring my gaming experience with uh, Aliens. Awesome, man. Well, thank you very much for the interest. I really appreciate it.